Hello there. Today, by Patreon request, we're going to be talking about tattoos. Um, so, to begin with, there were two major sorts of tattoo. Um, there was the medicinal, and then there were sort of martial tattoos. Let's talk about the, the medicinal tattoos first. So, you know, back in the day, there was extensive knowledge of medicine. People knew how to make some sort of medicine out of just about anything. One limitation compared to the modern was a lack of syringes, so the oral medicine, that's the same as it is now, and so is the topical medicine, the stuff you rub in, is also good medicine for wounds, but there wasn't a really good way to get medicine underneath the skin if the skin wasn't already broken. So what was done was, say you got a dislocation in your knee or whatever, what was done was you take the, the medicine and smear it over the affected area, then you take a porcupine quill and you go and you poke the medicine through the skin. Now, you don't get a heck of a lot of medicine through the skin with one, one poke, so you do it a lot of times. You go around the affected area and you keep poking until you think you've got enough. Then you go and you rub the remaining medicine into the holes. Now, this has got a couple of shortcomings compared to a syringe. One being that you're not getting very much in, so you have to do a lot of it. It's also not going in very deep. It's just going in into the skin, really. The other is that because of the equipment for making medicine, you're going to have much larger particle size than you would today with a modern injection. So the result of all of this is that you're going to have a big mark, right? You're going to have an involuntary tattoo. The medicine is going into the skin rather than through it, and the medicine isn't all necessarily absorbable. You're going to have an involuntary tattoo, whether you like it or not. So because of this, people started doing the... I don't know what you call it. I suppose injection is sort of the closest word. They do it in a, a pattern. So rather than having a big, ugly blotch on the injured portion of the body, you might do, say, a series of bands with um, herringbone lines in between. Right? So you, now it looks like you've got a nice decorative pattern. So another thing that was done was you might inscribe the... you might do the tattoo in the shape of a medicinal plant or whatever. So one of the things that was done, if you got a toothache, the medicine for a toothache is made from willow bark, so what you might do is you tattoo a willow branch on the jaw. Right? The idea there being that you won't get a toothache in the future because you've already got the medicine inside of you, really. Now this is sort of a bit of a one of those interesting false associations. So, the reason why you'd think this is because the medicine takes a heck of a long time to absorb. It's going into the skin and it's larger particle size, so your body has to break down this stuff that's in your skin before it can act as medicine. So, one of these tattoos, even though it's not as effective as a proper injection of the similar material, um, it's going to last a heck of a lot longer because your body has to break it down. Um, Supposedly, the residual effects could last for years before it was fully absorbed. Now, this sort of tattoo is available to anybody, but you have to have a, an injury that's serious enough to warrant it. So, um, so it was fairly common for broken bone, any, any bone injury, because you, you can't really treat that. Other than setting it, you can't really treat that. It was also commonly used for things like arthritis. So another thing that was done was for like internal injuries, so, or heart problems, stuff like that, lung issues, right? have something tattooed on the chest. Um, it has to be more serious than the tattoo itself, the injury. So if you've got just a, a bruise, that bruise is going to heal faster if you don't bother tattooing it. Right? But, you know, a broken bone, that's, um, that lasts a heck of a long time and it hurts a heck of a lot. So You also wouldn't tattoo open injuries. So, so if you slice your hand open, um, there's no point in doing a tattoo on that, an uh, injection on that, because you've already got a big opening for the medicine to be applied directly. So, um, I think that's all I got to say on that, so tune in next time where we'll be talking about the martial tattoos. See you then.